well, to Crystal Maker 10. In this tutorial, we'll build the crystal structure of the oxide mineral spinel. Let's get started with a new document window, and I'm going to click the Add button to add a new crystal to this existing window. Now that brings up the crystal editor sheet. And we need three things here. We need the space group symbol. This defines the structure's symmetry. We need the cell parameters or lattice parameters. These define the shape of the unit cell. And we then need the coordinates of atoms in the asymmetric unit. Now this is the minimum group of atoms which in combination with the symmetry gives us a complete unit cell. Now for the space group I can type in a symbol. Uh, but what I'm going to do is to click the Browse button and I can choose the space group from this convenient popover. Now, the space group I need is actually an unconventional space group. And by default, those are hidden for simplicity, but we can make them visible by clicking this Show Unconventional Settings button. And then the unconventional space groups are shown in red. So I'm looking for a cubic space group that has a face-centered lattice. And then I can scroll down the corresponding space groups. And here, FD bar 3M is the space group I want. Now, when that's selected, we get some information on the right-hand side about this space group. And its details are copied to the crystal editor sheet. So I can close the sheet and there is my space group with some information about it below. Now because this is a cubic crystal, the only lattice parameter I need is the A cell parameter. So I'm going to press the tab key to move to that field and I'll enter the correct value. On to the asymmetric unit now. Each atom requires the minimum of three things. We need a unique label. So for my first site, I'm just going to call that M. And then we need to tell the program what type of atom or atoms reside on that site. That's what we call the occupancy. And this is essentially the chemical formula of the site. Now, if your structure is ordered, then you'll just have one element on the site. If you have a disordered structure, you may have two or more elements on the site and the total occupancy cannot exceed one. So for this M site, then I need aluminium and then I need some fractional coordinates. So a half, a half, a half. And I'm going to add a second site. I click the plus button and this is going to be a T site and I'm going to put magnesium on this site. An eighth, an eighth, an eighth. And my third site is an oxygen site, 0.262. So at this stage I have all the information necessary to draw one unit cell of this spinel structure. So I'll press the OK button to display that unit cell. I'm going to just scale this up a little bit and we can see we have a box. We can rotate this with the mouse and we can see the edges of the unit cell are drawn here with the white lines. The atoms are drawn in different colors and at different sizes and we can use the legend here in the top right hand corner as a uh, key to those colors. Now these colors and radii are automatically generated by the program using its current element table, which is something that you can edit using the preferences command. Uh, we can override those colors and radii and we'll do that in a moment. Before we do that, however, we'll take a look at the info inspector here on the right hand side of the screen. Now this is divided into two parts and at the top we have a notes field where you can enter information about the structure. This accepts rich text. 
So let's type in something. Uh, the crystal structure of spinel, MgAl2O4. I said it accepts rich text. So let's put some subscripts in here. Uh, I can use keyboard shortcuts, but I'm going to right click and uh, use the contextual menu. Subscript and another subscript. Let's make this one bold and let's change this color to red using the color palette. Now at the bottom of the info inspector uh, we have a resizable info palette with some information about this structure. This provides a quick summary of the numbers of atoms and their types as well as the cell volume and the density. Now I said we can override the colors and radii very easily and uh, to do that we can move on to the next tab in this inspector and this is the atoms inspector. And here we have a listing of the atoms grouped by chemical element and we can click on these disclosure triangles to see the sites that correspond to particular chemical element. In this case we only have one site per chemical element but some structures have many more. Now from left to right we have an icon that represents the style of the site and we can click that to choose different styles for a particular site. I'm going to stick with these rendered spheres for the moment. We then have a color control so we can change the colors at any time. We can toggle visibility on or off using this Viz checkbox. That's useful when you have uh, large uh, oxygen atoms in the way. We can hide the oxygens and see what the metal atoms are doing. Uh, and then we have a label checkbox. So we can turn labeling on for groups of atoms. Next up is the radius column. Uh, here are the space filling radii for the atoms. Uh, you can just click or double click here and change the radius. We have an undo command so I can easily go back. And then on the right hand side if we have any bonding then we have a summary of the coordination states for particular sites. Talking about bonding let's move on to the bonds inspector which is the next tab. Now if you happen to be reading in a crystal structure from a text file then chances are bonding will be automatically generated for you. But if you're building a new structure from scratch then we need to build the bonds ourselves. So I can double click to add a bond specification. I can choose a bond style by clicking on its style icon and then I can choose the element pair that we're interested in. So we might want to have bonds from aluminium to oxygen. And the program very sensibly uses the sum of the radii plus 15% to calculate a suitable maximum bond distance. And it summarizes the expected coordination on the right hand side. So it's telling us here that each aluminium atom is surrounded by six oxygens and each oxygen is surrounded by or coordinated by three aluminium atoms. Now I could do the same thing for the magnesium and oxygen atoms. Uh, we can also use this actions menu to auto generate bonds. And that will add all the appropriate bonds for the structure without us having to explicitly add individual bond specifications. Now as we rotate this structure you can see that some atoms don't have their full complement of bonds and uh, some atoms are fully bonded. It's the atoms on the inside that are fully bonded and you can see the atoms at the edges are the ones that uh, are uh, deprived of bonds. So we might want to uh, extend the range of atoms so that we can add a few more bonds. And we can do that by using the range button in the program's toolbar. We're currently displaying a single unit cell, the range of coordinates along x, y and z, the fractional coordinates goes from 0 to 1. 
uh, we can change those values using this little popover. Uh, I'm going to click the expand range button a few times and we'll expand our plot range. Uh, click outside the popover to dismiss the popover. And now we have a nice complement of bonds. Now, just a few notes about manipulating our new crystal. If you have a multi-touch trackpad, you can use standard pinch to zoom uh, gestures to change the scale. Very easy to do. You can click and drag with a mouse to rotate. Or you can use trackpad gestures to scroll left or right. And we can rotate about an axis out of the screen by holding the shift key down and then clicking and dragging with the mouse. Crystal Maker also supports the Leap Motion 3D controller, which allows you to rotate and scale a structure with hand gestures, which is a very cool feature. You don't have to use interactive rotation and scaling, however. We can look down an explicit view direction using the Orient command. So let's have a look down this crystal's 111 direction. And we can also rotate through explicit angles using the rotate popover. Now many of these popovers can actually be repositioned and left open if necessary. You can click and drag the popover and let's just rotate this to 90 degrees and now we can see the structure sideways on. We finish with the popover so we'll close it. So here we have our ball and stick model of the spinel structure and you can see that we have layers of oxygen atoms with metal ions in between. This is a ball and stick model which is the default model type. If you move to the program's model menu you'll see that other model types are available. So we can have a space filling model where the atoms are plotted at their correct sizes and we can have a polyhedral model. If we go to the atoms inspector, we can customize the way these are displayed. Now we don't want to display the oxygen polyhedra here, so I can go down to the oxygen group, I can click that and I can specify maybe a sphere style or a blank style and just show the metal polyhedra in our structure. I'm going to go back to the range command and I'm going to contract the range slightly and that gives me a nice view of one unit cell of the spinel structure plotted in this simplified polyhedral model letting us focus on the environments around the yellow magnesium atoms and the cyan aluminium atoms.